Good morning, and welcome to Central Presbyterian Church's online worship service for this Sunday, September 13th, 2020. I'm your lay leader, Zach Cosner. I invite you to download the bulletin for today's service, which can be found in the link below this video on Facebook and on YouTube, or you can head to our website, www.centralprespb.com. Click on the publications link found at the menu bar at the top of the page. Once you're on that page, go ahead and scroll down until you find today's date. Go ahead and click on that, and uh, you should be able to download the bulletin uh, for today's service. Uh, since you have uh, hopefully downloaded the bulletin, I will ask you that you turn your attention to the announcements found on the back of that bulletin. The archives for our online services can be found on Facebook and on YouTube. Links to each are found on our website, as I mentioned before. That's centralprespb.com. Also, we have online giving now available. Uh, look for the Donate Now link on the top of the webpage. We take uh, debit cards, credit cards, and checks. And you can also set up a recurring monthly, weekly, or bi-weekly uh, donation. Um, we do appreciate all the support during this uh, rough time during uh, where we're not uh, having in-person services. Your support is greatly appreciated. Uh, with the announcements out of the way, let's go ahead and... Um, uh, prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. God is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. God does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our inequities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is God's steadfast love towards those who revere God. Our God is a God of justice, waiting to be gracious to you, yearning to have pity on you. Blessed all are who wait for the Lord. In penitence and faith, let us confess our sins to Almighty God, first using the prayer printed in the bulletin, and then silently. Let us pray. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So we pray, O God. Yet we confess our lives show forth little mercy. We pass judgment on people who think and live differently than we do. Suspicion, jealousy, and quarrels infect our relationships and keep us from building communities where everyone feels welcome and known. Merciful God, again we ask you for forgiveness. Teach us and guide us to extend to others what we have received so abundantly from you gracious acceptance, saving help, and love that binds us together. In Jesus' name we pray. Now silently. Amen. The good news in Christ is that we face ourselves and God with the awareness of our need, and we are given grace to grow, encouraged to continue the journey. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. For our first scripture reading of this week, we are looking at Ephesians chapter 4, Verses 17 through 32. Listen for the word of the Lord. Now this I affirm and insist on in the Lord. You must no longer live as the Gentiles live, in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of their ignorance and hardness of heart. They have lost all sensitivity and have abandoned themselves to a litigiousness greedy to practice every kind of impunity. That is not the way you learned Christ. For surely you have heard about him and you were taught in him as truth is in Jesus. You were taught to put away your former way of life, your old self, corrupt and deluded by its lusts, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to clothe yourself with the new self, created according to the likeness of God and the true righteousness and holiness. So then putting away falsehood, 
Let, us, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members to, of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up. There is need, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath, and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Today's sec second scripture reading is from Matthew uh, chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. Again, listen for the word of the Lord. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if, an if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this is the reason the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity uh, for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that, but that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves that owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open our hearts and minds, O God, by the po power and presence of your Holy Spirit, so that, your, so that as your word is proclaimed this day, we may hear with joy what it is you would have us hear, and hearing we might believe, and in believing we might live lives richer and fuller in service to you, glorifying you here on earth as you are glorified in heaven. Amen. As you probably can tell, um, I did not um, hand over uh, the video over to Reverend Tim Reeves. Um, unfortunately for us this Sunday, uh, he is unavailable. Uh, he's not had a, a little bit of a, a medical issue, um, nothing too serious. Um, we continue to keep him in prayer uh, to feel better, but he uh, asked me if I would be willing to fill in and read uh, the sermon that he has prepared for us today. And so I, um, I gave, uh, told him I would. And so uh, I hope you uh, uh, hear what uh, the words that he has presented to us. Uh, today's sermon is Liberating the Imprisoned Soul. The Spanish called it the Isle of the Pelicans, but few people know it by that name. Some nicknamed it the Rock. And from 1933 to 1963, 
Alcatraz served as the site of nearly inescapable federal penitentiary. The guards were armed with machine guns and could not be bribed. Double locked doors enclosed each corridor and the cold waters of the ocean surrounded the island. However, as bad as conditions were in Alcatraz, this is hardly the world's worst prison, for it could only imprison the body. Jesus talked about a prison that could shackle the soul. It is said that we put ourselves into that prison every time we are unable to forgive. To forgive someone the hurt that they have caused us can be one of the toughest things that we can be called to do. There are people who have fallen out with members of their families, who are no longer talking to one-time friends, or who have served all, severed all connections with those who are brothers and sisters in Christ because they have found it impossible to forgive someone who hurt them. For whatever reason, they find that the hurt is just too enormous. It would mean giving up too much to go to those who have hurt them and seek a way to be reconciled with one another. There is a reason for this. Forgiveness is countercultural. It goes against every instinct of self-preservation. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. When it comes right down to it, we don't want to forgive. We would rather nurse our hurts and keep our wounds open and stew in righteous indignation. Revenge, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. This is the preferred way of dealing with someone. Truth be told, instead of following the example of our Lord, many of us are more no akin to Madame Defarge in Charles Dickens' novel, A Tale of Two Cities, who spent her time knitting the names of all the people on whom she would one day exact revenge. Moreover, we expect our Lord to feel the same way. Perhaps that is why Peter addressed his famous question to Jesus, How often should I forgive? As many as seven times? He appears to be implying that there must be a limit to the number of times he should have to forgive someone who repeatedly hurts and offends him. It is likely that he was expecting a positive response from Jesus. We should take note of the fact that Peter's mention of seven times was, in fact, quite generous. The custom of the day only required a person to forgive three times. The basis for this was found in Job Chapter, 20, uh, 20, excuse me, chapter 33, verses 29 through 30, which reads, God indeed does all, thing, all these things twice, three times with mortals to bring back their souls from the pit so that they may see the light of life. The rabbis reason that if God only tried to save a person three times, then God does not expect us to forgive more than three times. Thus, Peter's question and suggestion of seven times would certainly have been seen to go above and beyond the call of duty. Yet Jesus' answer revealed that Peter had failed to grasp the depth of forgiveness that love demands. Jesus' response that we are for to forgive 70 times 7 is not meant to imply that finally, on the 400, 491st time, we can refuse to forgive, but rather that we are never to be close to the possibility of forgiveness. There is to be no record keeping of how many times we offer forgiveness. The purpose of all this forgiveness talk is reconciliation. And to further illustrate what he's trying to say, Jesus tells the parable of the unforgiving servant. A king going over his accounts discovers that one of his stewards owes him 10,000 talents. A talent was the equivalent of 15 years worth of wages. 10,000 talents would have therefore been equivalent of 150,000 years worth of wages. In other words, this is a debt that the steward could never hope to repay. The king demands that he pay, but when he cannot, the king prepares to sell him and his family into slavery in order to satisfy the debt. Knowing that his family would suffer severely and that he would not be able to repay his debt from prison, the servant falls at his master's feet and pleads for an extension. But as we, as we have already seen, such a request is a delusion. He cannot bring himself to admit that he cannot repay this debt. We often lived under that same delusion. Even as we look at the cross, we cannot believe that we are spiritually bankrupt and cannot repay our debt to God. 
rather than acknowledging the deep-seated truth behind the fact that in this death in his death and resurrection jesus bestowed a mercy we can never repay we remain convinced that we are basically good people sure we don't always do everything right but deep down we know that we are not as bad as some people the result of such thinking is that we take god's forgiveness of our own sinfulness too lightly just like the unforgiving steward we would expect the steward to be profoundly grateful for his release instead Upon leaving the king, the steward sees someone who owes him the equivalent of roughly four months' wages. The steward, full of fury, grabs his debtor by the throat and demands immediate payment. The debtor pleads for mercy, but the steward throws him into prison, where he will remain until the debt is paid. Living in the glorious state of grace that we do, I find it amazing that we continue to live our lives as we deserve the love and grace that God has lavished upon us. Such thinking is the basis of self-righteous delusion. When we insist that we deserve such mercy, it becomes that much easier to withhold such mercy from those we deem as undeserving. How ironic that we who depend on so much on the grace of God find it difficult to be gracious to others. In the final scene of the parable, other servants observing this ill treatment tell the king. Enraged, the king calls for the steward. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you, says the king, who then hands him over to be tortured until he pays the debt. Jesus then concludes his teaching with the words, so my heavenly father will also do to every one of you, if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. What Jesus is conveying is that an unforgiving spirit imprisons the soul. We may assume that we are hurting the other person by withholding forgiveness, but in reality, we are only hurting ourselves. It takes energy to hold a grudge. Resentment, anger, and hatred can consume a person. The imprisoned soul can only be liberated when we receive the mercy offered to us in Jesus Christ and freely share that mercy with others. In heaven, there are only forgiven sinners. There are no good guys, no upright, successful types who, by dint of their own integrity, have been accepted into the great country club in the sky. There are only failures. Those who have accepted their deaths and their sins and who have been raised up by the king, who himself died, that they may live. But in hell, too, there are only forgiven sinners. Jesus on the cross does not sort out certain ex exceptionally recalc recalc recalcitrant parties and cut them off from the pardon of his death. He forgives the badness of even the worst of us, willy-nilly, and he never takes back that forgiveness not even at the bottom of the bottomless pit. The sole difference, therefore, between hell and heaven is that in heaven the forgiveness is accepted and passed along, while in hell it is rejected and blocked. In heaven the death of the king is welcome and becomes the doorway to a new life in the resurrection. In hell the old life of the bookkeeping world is insisted on, and becomes forever the pointless torture it always has. Little wonder that Paul would exhort the Christians in Ephesus, put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. We have been forgiven to do the work of forgiving, each and every time, 70 times 7. To God be all the honor, glory, and praise forever. Amen. I would ask now at this time that you would please join me and confirm what it is we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed that can be found in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now return, our, uh, return to God our thanksgiving through our tithes and our offerings, which again this week will be taken electronically by going to our website, www.centralprespb.com, clicking the Donate Now link, and making your tithe. We also uh, ask you that if you're not willing to do that uh, that way, please feel free to mail us checks or money orders to 6300 Trinity Drive, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, 71603. It is right and our greatest joy to give you thanks, eternal God, for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. But we are most grateful for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and for your abiding and sustaining Holy Spirit. For our Lord reconciled us to you and to one another, opening the door to eternal life. Your Holy Spirit continues to confront us, convict us, correct us, and equip us to enter the world and share the good news of your redeeming grace. And so, O oh God, we offer up our time, our talents, our treasures, and indeed our very selves for you to use as you see fit, until that most glorious day when, at the name of Jesus, every knee in heaven and on earth and under the earth shall bend, and every tongue shall confess him, Lord, to your honor and glory. Amen. Now it is time to share our joys and concerns, uh, which we have several. Let me see if I can find them real quick. Um, I ask that uh, we continue to keep uh, Carol and Emil Brown uh, in your prayers. Uh, we ask that you um, keep Rob Button and Sydney Hayes um, in your prayers. Both have been diagnosed with uh, COVID-19. Uh, we continue to ask for continued prayer for Dominic Munn, who is uh, going to be visiting a new doctor this coming week. Uh, we continue to pray for Kathy Griffin, uh, who is um, sister uh, to uh, Pamela Riggler. Uh, she uh, is going in for another procedure. Um, she had some um, heart issues recently, and I believe they're going to put a new stint in. And um, the other thing that was mentioned in our uh, prayer chat, um, my daughter, uh, six-year-old Langston, um, told everyone through her mother that uh, she prays that we reopen soon, uh, that COVID goes away, because she misses everyone uh, desperately. So uh, please keep Langston in your prayers. And please keep the uh, church in your prayers as we hope to reopen as soon as, as, soon as it is safe to do so. Uh, we also continue to hold our um, first-line responders in uh, our prayers as they continue to uh, deal with this uh, pandemic. We ask that you continue to uh, pray for protection for our uh, retail workers, our uh, medical professionals, our um, many of our uh, friends and neighbors who have contracted COVID-19, uh, those who have uh, lost loved ones to this horrible disease. Um, we ask that you please be uh, with them as well. Uh, we continue to ask for prayer for this world and our country as we uh, remember the uh, attacks on 9-11 some 19 years ago. And we also uh, pray for uh, healing and reconciliation among all of our, uh, our citizens of the U.S. Let us pray. Holy and gracious Father, we give you thanks that the Lord Jesus Christ is in fact the same today as he was yesterday and will be for all of our tomorrows. We continue to ask for uh, protection and healing for Rob Button, Sidney Hayes, Kathy Griffin, Dominic Munn, and Emil and Carol Brown. Uh, we know that, that you will uh, place the knowledge into the doctors and the uh, medical professionals that are helping those people uh, to get a good outcome for their various medical uh, issues, that we, we pray for their healing, uh, we pray for their um, 
full recovery from all of the illnesses that they are all struck with. Uh, we continue to pray for our church. Uh, please bless this congregation and this ministry in your world, uh, for we try to do uh, all of our, uh, our best to uh, share uh, your reconciling message and your forgiving message uh, with those in our congregation, our community, and our state, and our uh, country, and our world. Uh, we continue to uh, pray for those who are dealing with COVID-19, uh, be it the um, retail workers, be it the first responders, our correctional officers, um, our uh, police officers, our um, military. Uh, we ask that you uh, be with those who have lost loved ones. So many people have lost loved ones to this horrible disease, and we ask that you be with those people and know uh, let them know that you are with them and that you are holding them in your care. Uh, we continue to ask for your reconciliation for our, our country and our world uh, during these troubled times. Give us hope as we strive to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we for, uh, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now go out into the world in peace, to serve, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power and the presence of God's Holy Spirit, taking today's message of reconciliation with you, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.